So this is where the pellets will start their journey on site via these railway lines, which historically have been used for coal deliveries, but we renovated in order to accommodate the conversion of the power plant. Um, we'll take a maximum of two deliveries per day per unit uh, to feed our fuel conversion. Once the pellets arrive on site via rail, they're unloaded in a specialist uh, pellet unloading facility where the fuel falls through the bottom of the wagons and is conveyed either to storage or up to the power plant for combustion via this main conveyor. This is the bunker house. It's here that the fuel is brought in to the station from external storage. So once the fuel gets to the top of the external main fuel conveyor, it's discharged onto one of these two moving belt conveyors which move the fuel up to one of the structures you can see behind me, which are the tripper units. These tripper units move and can select which bunker of the 15 that we have on site into which to discharge the fuel. The fuel then falls into the bunkers and we have roughly 3,000 tonnes worth of bunker capacity here, where the fuel can be momentarily stored before it's discharged through to the fuel milling plant. Once the fuel has left the bunkers, it's fed at a controlled rate into the milling plant. It's here that the fuel is crushed into a small particle size before it's conveyed to the boiler for combustion. So here before us, you can see the coal mills, which are Babcock E-mills, which rely on a series of balls sat within a spinning table. On conversion to waste-derived fuel pellets will require hammer mills to pulverize the fuel. Uh, those mills will be installed in a similar area you see here and they'll be state-of-the-art state to reduce the incoming pellets to a fine powder before it's conveyed to the boiler. In essence, the process remains almost exactly the same. Um, we're reducing the particle size to ensure that we have clean, efficient and complete combustion in the furnace. So what we have here are the pulverised fuel pipes. Once we've ground the fuel into a powder at the mills, it's blown up several stories and to the boiler front. We have a number of these pipes on site to feed the 16 burners that we'll be using post-conversion. Those burners are ultra-low NOx pulverized fuel burners, which will mix the conveyed fuel with preheated combustion air at 300 degrees C in a highly turbulent zone within the furnace. It's in this area that we produce a continuous self-sustained flame, which combusts all of the incoming fuel to release a huge amount of energy, 330 megawatts thermal. It's that energy which is used to heat the water into steam and superheat the steam for admission to the turbine for the production of electricity. Here behind me, you can see some of the main and reheat steam pipes of the Usmouth power station. It's here that we take steam from the boiler and admit it to the turbine. In the boiler, we're able to produce 115 kilograms per second of superheated steam at 110 bar. That's an absolutely huge quantity of energy. We do that by introducing water to the boiler, which we rise up through a series of hundreds of tubes, which we call a water wall, directly surrounding the main combustion zone. It's here that the water picks up heat and is transferred into steam. The steam is then fed into the boiler drum, where it's separated from the water and fed to what we call a superheater. In the superheater, we heat the steam to 543 degrees C before it's admitted to the turbine. That ensures that there's no moisture in the turbine by the time it finishes the power cycle. So the high pressure superheated steam produced by the boiler is first admitted to a high pressure turbine and then to an intermediate and low pressure turbine. At each stage, the steam gives up its energy to mechanical energy in the rotation of the turbine blades, which is transferred to the generator spinning a stator within a rotor, both of which are magnetic, to generate electricity. The cooling water used in the condenser picks up heat in the condenser and then rejects it via the cooling towers. When the plant was built, it was equipped with three independent control rooms, one for each unit. The control rooms relied largely on analog equipment, such as you can see here. Uh, as part of the conversion, we'll be transitioning to a modern system of distributed control for the entire plant. Uh, that'll sit centrally in a single control room. Uh, and by, by moving to modern systems, we can increase the safety uh, of the site, uh, improve its reliability, and also ensure that we can operate within environmental limits. 
overall, the generated electrical efficiency of the converted station will be 36.55%. That will make it the most efficient electricity generator using waste fuels in the world. It's in this way that we can take waste that would otherwise be destined for landfill or incineration and produce much needed electricity for South Wales uh, in the most efficient process available.